Hello and welcome to the uh, website podcast sermon. Our gospel reading this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter, is from John chapter 14. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and will take you to myself, so that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Homes, life, death. These have been words we've heard a lot. Stay at home, save lives, the death rates in each country and our own country. I suppose it is the theme of the Gospel reading when Jesus talks about his Father's heavenly home. It's a fascinating subject, and it introduces the subject of death and what lies beyond it. It's an exceedingly important topic, obviously. But we have to reflect that we are earthbound, tethered there by our secular culture and its attitudes and its values, and we are led to think that earth is our home. And any talk of leaving it, earth dwellers become apprehensive and unsettled. No wonder the media are having such a field day at the moment. The Bible reminds us something that we don't like to be reminded of too often, our own mortality. Life is very brief indeed. If you ask of the Bible the question, what is your life? It invites us to consider a series of metaphors. It's like the mist appearing early morning and disappearing in the afternoon. It's like water poured out on a hot path that quickly evaporates. It's like the chaff that is blown away. It's like the grass that withers, the flower that fades in the blistering heat of a summer day. It's like a dream of the night forgotten at the breakfast table. Like a sigh, a puff of breath, and then it's all over. And there are probably other metaphors that signify our mortality, there's eight of them, and the Bible urges us to recognise this, to recognise our mortality and make sensible preparations for death, our own death, so that we may be ready. Yes, of course, we come to terms with mortality because it's part of life because of sin, but death is never a part of God's creation. It wasn't intended. It's not part of his eternal purpose for us. Death is still like a scorpion to a believer, but it's without the sting. It's still there, but we need not fear it. That's the consistent testimony of Christians down history. Death is no more to be feared. Henry Venn was one of the founders of CMS, the Church Missionary Society, in 1796, and he'd moved to live with his son John, the Vicar of Clapham, in 1796, and by June, it was evident that he was dying, a prospect which made him so jubilant and high-spirited at the thought that he was to be with the Lord, it kept him alive for another fortnight. John chapter 14 helps us. If you have a Bible, have it open at the passage. Do not let your hearts be troubled. My father's home is prepared, and so on. That where I am you may be also. I am the way. In chapter 13, Jesus told his disciples that he was to die and that some of them would have to lay down their lives as well. And so that's why he's saying in the first verse of chapter 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. And then there's a beautiful description of heaven. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Or in my father's home. 
So Christians often refer to dying as going home. The only other place where this home word is mentioned, the Greek word, is in verse, I think, 23 of chapter 14, where the father and son on earth make their home with those who love him. The father and son have a temporary dwelling on earth, preparatory to our making our home with them permanently in heaven. It expresses that the earthly state is transitory and provisional, and in comparison with that is the permanence and indestructibility of union with God in the home of the Father. And Paul describes life as a tent, this earthly life, a tent of a nomad. It's temporary, it's easily blown over, whereas home is permanent and indestructible. That's from 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, is it, chapter 5. Now, you might ask me how I'm sure of that, and I would just refer you to the four promises in the Bible in John chapter 14. This is the first promise from Jesus. I am going to prepare a place for you. Death is a journey to a prepared place. And we all know the comfort and reassurance of going to a place we've never been to before where someone with loving hands has got it all ready beforehand and you arrive with a welcome, with fresh flowers, fresh soap, clean fluffy towels on the beds. Someone's gone ahead to prepare. Heaven may be unknown, but it's not unprepared. Jesus has gone ahead to get the place ready. He went by dying on the cross opening the gate of heaven to all believers, so says the ancient canticle, the Te Deum. I am going. I will come again, though, is his second promise. Having gone ahead to prepare, he doesn't abandon his disciples to find their own way there. He comes back to escort them to make sure they don't get lost on the journey. There's lots of debate about how he is going to come. I think the best and probably the most relevant uh, interpretation is that Jesus is coming as a personal one to each of his people at death. When he says, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come to receive you. And this promise, I think, leads us to the confidence in dying that Jesus says this to every believer. He comes to fetch us. I go, I come, I will receive you to myself. That's the third promise. So that where I am, you may be also. He goes ahead of us, he comes back to fetch us, and he takes us to be with himself. So many people are curious about the details of heaven. What carat gold is it made of? Is it made from pearls? Where do they get them all from? From oysters, these pearly gates? And the music, what will be played? What will we do all day long? There's a banquet. What sort of food is it? All sorts of questions about the details of heaven. But of course, these questions pale into insignificance beside this huge incontrovertible fact. Heaven is filled with the presence of of Jesus. He tells his disciples, he goes, he will come back, he comes to them, receives them, that where he is they may be also. And the fourth promise, I am the way. He doesn't just show us the way, he is the way. Once we know Christ, we have found the way to heaven. As he says in John chapter 17 and verse 3, this is eternal life. God the Father and the only Son whom he has sent. This is eternal life. There are four promises in which we can trust. All four promises relate to Jesus, to what he has done, what he will do and who he is. We cannot think about heaven as we do this Sunday without thinking of Jesus he goes, he is our forerunner. He comes back to be our escort. He is the destination that we may be where he is, and he himself is the way. That's the remedy for mortality, to believe 
the promises of Jesus. Therefore, don't let your heart be troubled. And here's the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have opened death, who have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.